Oftentimes, it's easy to give of the little time we actually have to give. But sometimes we have to couple that giving with a financial sacrifice. Other times we have to couple that giving with all kinds of other things that add value to. In this case, giving to the McIntyres is an easy thing for us to do because it recognizes not only a couple who gives of their time, but a couple who gives of their treasure, who gives all, really, that anyone could expect someone to give in this community. It is my privilege now to ask Mr. McIntyre and his wife Joanne to come to the stage. It's also an opportunity for me as superintendent to say thank you to all of the family members who are here supporting the students. It's my opportunity to say to the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the advocates, thank you for being there when your student needed you the most. Whether it was staying up late at night to finish a project, whether it was working on homework when no one else wanted to stay up with them, for a couple of dads in here, I know because I've seen your work, thank you for coloring some maps. <laughs> but I really want to speak to the young people tonight, because I really have just a few quick comments to make to each of you. First of all, your academic talent invites great responsibility. A responsibility to use that talent. Even when some might suggest that it's not cool to be smart, for you to stand up proud and say, I am proud that I'm smart. I absolutely. <laughs> there is a biblical phrase that goes something like this, and to the biblical scholars in the room, I apologize, but it says, to much who is given, much is expected. Young people, you've been blessed with tremendous talents and abilities, whether they be in the social studies, the arts, mathematics, or science, or writing, or a host of other activities that haven't been recognized by this system today. Please use those talents to the God-given ability that you have. Reach down deep and pull out every bit of excellence that's within you, because each of us are counting on you to be that person, to be the person who makes a difference. All you have to do today is pick up the newspaper or watch the television news to know that this world is in need of you. We need the cures. We need the solutions. 
We need the peaceful resolution to the problems that this world faces. And I believe it rests in this room this evening. One of you has the skills and talent, if not many of you, have the skills and talents to rescue us from ourselves. Let me finally conclude my comments by saying simply this. Each of you are going to be called on to demonstrate courage over the next few years of your school career. The courage to say no when someone tries to drag you down. The courage to do the right thing when even no one is looking. You're going to have to persevere. When your friends are out having a good time and you know that the way to your future is to stay home and sustain that good effort, you're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to say no. Not for me tonight. I can put off the short-term benefit for the long-term gain. You're also going to have to accept that nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. That it comes with sustaining the hard work that you've put in to get where you are today. I encourage each of you to continue to be that student that all of us look up to and that all of us are thankful for. Parents and adults in the room, I'm going to ask you to do something right now. And young people, I'm going to ask you to kind of turn your heads towards the adults in just a moment. But oftentimes in athletics or in the theater or in other venues, young people experience the thrill of a standing ovation. All too often, however, they don't feel that same thing for their classroom efforts. Let's let them feel what a standing ovation feels like. Please stand and join me in saluting your children. I hope you know just how much the adults in this room care for you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that wonderful speech, Dr. Wilcox. And now, the stage members will take their places and the first group of students will come forward. PRIDE is an acronym that stands for the Program to Recognize Initiative and Distinction in Education. More than an acronym, though, it is what we all feel here tonight. At this time, we will begin the individual recognition of these outstanding students by their principals. We ask you to hold your applause until the principal has announced the names of all students. We are indeed proud to introduce the 2008 Pride Award recipients for academic excellence.